What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Ryan from Freedom Foods Farm and we have a uh, feeling a little bit ambitious today and have a kind of a big project to do. Now what you just saw right there was me moving the cows to their next paddock and I was able to do so in like a minute and a half. It takes basically no time to do. And the reason that it takes no time to do is because of the, because of the infrastructure that I have in place that uh, you know in the electric fence that I placed all around our farm on that side of the street. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the this farm, my dad's side of the street now, set up. So here's what we're looking at. If you guys haven't seen uh, if you guys haven't seen this yet, this is my dad's new farm. We bought the farm right across the street from me. So here's a kind of an overall little picture of what it looks like. It's just over 16 acres, and we're gonna be moving cows over here pretty soon. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna take the, the lessons that we learned across the street and apply them here so it's one, a lot cheaper, two, a lot better, and three, a lot less of a headache. So I got all the tools I need, including my tripod for you guys. We got three different types of fence posts, wood, T-post, and my now famous uh, 67 cent electric uh, fence post, fiberglass ones that are just snow sticks that I got, got off of Amazon, which are great. Uh, we got our wire, hammers, insulators, we got digging tools, we have our fencing bucket, everybody has to have a fencing bucket because that's just the way things go. So the way that we're gonna look at this and set this up <clears throat> is figure out where we wanna put our lane that we have across the way. And coming down here, we have a fence or we have a gate that goes to the street and then on the other side of the street is our farm. So I wanna be able to use that gate to drive the side by side through um, every day. So we're gonna kinda work off of that and use this as a guide and then extend it out here and just go probably straight about that way so see the old uh, the neighbor's old chicken house out there we're probably gonna work off of that and uh, go like right in the middle where that down branch is probably you can see it way out there so we're gonna set up this lane and uh, hopefully it works out just fine we'll probably go right actually to the little tree right there I think that's my target and the reason for that is because it's about 750 feet across um, when you go from the forest, the edge of the forest, to the fence. So when we go right down the middle of it, it splits it up into, you know, was that 375 plus the lane, take it down a couple, what, 15 feet. So now we're looking at 360, so it's 330 each way. Across the way, everything's about 300 to 320. So we're trying to keep uh, the math kind of simple because I know, okay, if we go 100 feet, then uh, by 300 feet, that's three quarters of an acre, and it just makes it easy for me. So the first step that I gotta do, it's kind of a sucky one, so I gotta go here and count out 15, at least 15 feet. So 15's right here. That gives us a gate to be able to um, to be able to drive the side by side, to be able to get a tractor if need be. 15 feet is more than wide enough for any piece of equipment, so that's why we use 15 feet, 15 foot intervals. And right here, what we gotta do first, is this is where our first wood post will go. Because you need a, a wood post as, a, as an anchor for the, um, for the electric wire. And now, because we're only putting up one um, wire, maybe two, we don't need, Age sprays, we don't need anything fancy. 
it's just simply one wood post that we're going to drop down in here. And this tool right here, even though it's probably four times as old as I am, is the one that works best for me. Now some people will use post hole diggers, those are rough on my shoulders, I have a torn rotator cuff actually in both of them. So this one here is actually the easiest tool for me to dig these holes. So you gotta do whatever works for you. I know that there's augers and gas powered stuff, but actually the vibration doesn't, doesn't drive with me. It actually hurts a lot more. So I'm just gonna do this and uh, we'll get the first post in shortly. Note to self, if you're gonna build fence and you have to dig, do it in the springtime when the ground is soft. Why? Because it's much, much easier. I say much easier, I mean like 10 to 15 times easier. So make sure you do that in the springtime. And these are old posts that were in the ground um, when uh, the other fence got taken down the property line was put up prop uh, put up correctly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the side that's you know been in the ground for I don't know how many years. I'm gonna leave it on top, that way uh, the, it doesn't rot as fast. So we're gonna put the good side down, just like that. Bingo! Well, that took almost no time at all. So this guy's in, this is the most important one because this sets the tone of where, where we're going. Now, give you a little note. This land is relatively flat, so it makes it really easy. If this land was, you know, it had hills and stuff, um, you wouldn't want to just go straight down the middle. You'd try, at least try, to keep it to where, you know, you have a, a paddock on top of the hill. That way, when it's real wet, the cows can be up there. You have a paddock on the bottom of the hill. That way, if it gets real dry, you know what? The cows can be down there. So there's a lot of different factors, but here we're real lucky. So here we can just go straight down the middle and uh, just kind of roll with it because it's real flat. So, but now let's get to the next step. And that is what we're going to do is we're going to um, attach the, uh, the electric fence wire to this post, not permanently, just enough so we can roll it in a straight line all the way down. And this right here is the wire that we're using. It's 12 gauge electric fence aluminum wire, aluminum wire. It's very important that it's aluminum because it's, it's a lot lighter and then it's more conductive, it doesn't rust and it's just, you're able to bend it a lot easier. So make sure you get aluminum. Don't get the galvanized because over time, you know, it's just, this is just better. A little bit more expensive, much better. Now, I'm just gonna attach this just to the base loosely and then we're gonna go on a long walk and it should be enough wire, but we'll find out. Here. Twice. Bend it. And now, off we go. So now that we have our line built, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our 67 cent fiberglass snow stakes that we're going to use as electric fence post. And the way we're going to do that is you can't just use these all the way down because they're good just to hold up a wire in between. But uh, every, uh, every 100 feet, I'm going to put either a post like this in, a wood post, or um, a T post. That way it just gives the fence a little bit more support. But these here, they just keep costs down. They're easily replaceable and I just love them. So, and all I did, by the way, is I just drilled a hole through these, through the, the, the post. And because it's fiberglass, it's insulated. Just run a little uh, cotter key, if you want to call it, through it. Then we're good to go just to attach the electric fence line. It's been working for over a year now and I love them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one section just to show you guys that one, then I'm just gonna kinda go kinda fast. Um, so every 25 feet, we're gonna put a fence post. Remember, this is just one strand of a aluminum, you know, 12 gauge electric fence wire, high tinsel, okay? So it doesn't, doesn't weigh much, doesn't keep, take much to keep it up. So I'm gonna put three of these in, and then put a T-post in, and then we'll come back and uh, I'll show you.
so you guys can see what we've done okay close up wood post has a corner okay then we got three of these little fiberglass posts and then at the end of the hundred feet we have one t-post that I just pounded in we're gonna go three of these t-post three of these t-posts until we get to the, about the middle because once we get to the middle we're gonna put a gate in and what I mean by a gate is we're gonna put two wood posts in a row that way uh, you know we can put an electric gate handle in there and just kind of take down the wire if we need to if you know that way we don't have to if we want to run the cows on one side halfway through um, we don't have to take them all the way down it just adds for just, just gives us options now sometimes when you're doing a project and you see a problem like that we have a roll here that's called a thistle you see it you kill it so what we're gonna do we're gonna kill it and you know what that ripped up the roots this is the thistle kissel killer this is awesome now I miscalculated a little bit because this is uh, 600 feet of a, of a lane it's 800 feet from the highway so that's an extra 200 feet there that I didn't account for so what I'm gonna do here is because this is the halfway point this is where I'm going to put in the other uh, wood post so these next two posts are gonna be wood posts so I can have a gate so now just have to dig a hole put them in and uh, it'll keep going And we made it to the end of the line. That's our last post to put in. We got all these perfectly placed. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll up the wire halfway and then uh, we're gonna use that to put up on our post now. Now that we've got this rolled up halfway, what you wanna do is put this, put something here to where this isn't gonna move, but it can spin. That way you can pull out more wire if you need to. And this is why you're gonna want that extra wire because what you're gonna need to do is undo this and we're gonna pull this and you need at least six feet <laughs> we're gonna go a little bit more just so we're uh, just so we're safe now I'm just gonna shimmy back so this doesn't unroll completely come here Step this off, make sure you're standing on it so it doesn't go flying. Now we're just going to leave that there for a second. Now what you need is about 30 inches of wire. So about three feet. So you just go like just one, two, three-ish. Doesn't need to be exact science cut it now you take your pliers you go about three inches on the end of the wire okay which is about that long for me come here and you twist the wire to where it makes like a P you hold the, the P part in uh, the pliers in your right hand and you twist it, this around at least three times as tight as you can get it so it looks like that that's perfect then you take your insulator put the insulator on the other part now it looks like that then you can take this part the other half of the wire you're going to put it through the P and do the exact same thing you come here you're going to turn this over like this so you want the other loop to go through and then now you got now look like this and you take the pliers again 
hold that part, the loop part, the P part, whatever you want to call it. And then you twist three times. Man, I did that perfectly. That right there, that is exactly what you want. So now what you do is you're gonna set the height of your fence. And for me, what works well is about belt buckle high. So we're gonna take the insulator right here and we're gonna take a, a fencing staple put it on the back I like to try and put it at least in between the two loops and then we're gonna hammer it in I know I've made a video on this before but you know what this is just great stuff to know okay then you're gonna take this the, the insulator part then you're gonna twist it at least twice. You do it three times, that's great. One more, now that's on there. So now we're gonna go back and we're gonna make an, a second one of these before we go back. So again, about three feet of wire, you can do it. You need at least 30 inches, that's what I've found. Take your pliers. Three inches, twist over, grab here, twist three times, grab your insulator, put it on, put it through, three inches, twist over, Grab again, twist three times, then we're great. Now, what we're going to do is come down here and undo this wire real quick. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the wire and we're going to take a lot of extra slack because you might end up needing it right about here and then we're gonna go over the ceramic insulator you can use the plastic ones too but the ceramic ones are just better and you want to go over it twice just like that then what you're gonna do is you're gonna twist it again at least three times around like this Remember, you want to keep it as tight as possible. Now you want about this much remaining because if you go on to a second wire, like if we put a gate right here, this is going to be the jumper and it's going to be able to go around and you'll be able to jump and uh, jump this post and not have it short out or anything. So that's perfect. Now we're going to go down to the other end and uh, tighten it up. So now we're on the other end of that first line. What we're going to do just put the insulator around this about buckle high again it's like 30 to 36 inches if you want to get a technical about it but that's just how I know it on me push the staple in and we're going go now I might have made this one a little bit too too small but you know what it'll work yeah it'll be fine no big deal next time I know it's a little bit longer uh, bigger post to get myself a little bit more room now here what we're gonna do is come back to our wire and we're gonna give ourselves Wire, I'll knock, I'm gonna knock you guys down. Then, what we're gonna do 
bolts come underneath the insulator. Make sure that the wire's on there. So, and we're gonna start pulling this as tight as you can by hand. This will stay on. You don't need any anything other than just to pull it by hand. Just remember, this isn't a perimeter fence. And what you're going to do is you're going to go around again. So you just got to kind of figure it out. Maybe this is a little bit too much wire, but it's okay. I'll make it work. Too much wire, not enough. Then you don't have to do any splicing when you want to when you want to cut your jump. Come here. That tight. That's good enough. We're gonna go around three times. So now this is what you're left with. It's just putting the wire up. And I already have some of these cotter keys left in here. So we'll just use those. And then just twist it. Don't put the wire through the hole. It's gonna be tempting to put the wire through the hole, but don't put the wire through the hole. There you go, wire's up. No big deal, let's go to the next one. What we do, put the wire. We're here. Twist it up. This is probably the best experiment in line that worked. Because these things are great. Look at that. Bingo. Now here when we get to the T-post, go belt buckle for me or I like to go just one above because then it just adds a little bit more tension no that's too high that's too high we'll go we'll go belt buckle should be good enough think there we go that's more than enough tension actually it's good and there it is. This wire, this electric fence, is now up. This is 300 feet that I did. I just have to do the other side now. And like nothing, bingo, it works. This is how we've had it up on the other side for over a year, and uh, I love it. And the best part about it is that it cost me nothing. Literally, all the supplies was left over from what we did across the street. But with this up, we're ready for cows. Now, what I probably will do is I'll put a lane in 15 feet on this side, and that way this is where we drive every day and then we can plant fruit trees here like we did on the other side as well so uh you know you don't have to do that that's just something that i want to do because why not have it be more productive but it's ready for cows and see if you're leasing land guess what you could have this up this is very temporary you could have this up in 45 minutes everything i put up you can take down probably less than 45 minutes just go take a chainsaw cut down the post just level to the ground pull up all the the the, the little little post um, wiggle out the T-post, the roll up the wire, and you're done. It takes no time. So if you have a landowner that's worried about too much infrastructure on the land, very temporary. So now I'm just going to do the other half, and very, very simple, very easy. Hope you guys learned something. Hopefully, you know, you guys take my advice with those little fence posts there, because you save a whole ton of money with it. And we're going to continue to build this farm, so make sure you hit the subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell so you get notified when we put up new videos, hit the like button because it really helps boost us up in the YouTube algorithm, and drop a comment if you like, alright? Till next time, see ya, bye!